Well, it's great to have you all with us today. I'm here today with uh, Gavin Ann Calver from Spring Harvest. I'm Sim Dendy. I'm part of Spring Harvest, planning people along with them. And we just thought it'd be good to have a conversation as we enter into this whole new season of Spring Harvest Home and just discuss the new theme for the year, how everyone's doing uh, and what's been happening. So first and foremost, Gavin Ann Calver, how are you doing? How <laughs> <laughs> have you been, Anne? How have you been, Gav? I've, I've been pretty poorly, Sim, to be honest. I've had the virus, um, been on my back for a couple of weeks. It's been, it's been hard, especially the, the breathing, the struggle with the breathing. I mean, it's nothing on what some people are suffering, but just a little taster of some of it, and it's, it's really challenging. Yeah, I think if I'm honest, I mean, I'm not sure if I, if, if I had it or not, but I love going running, as you know, and I did go running for a week because I felt a little bit weak, and that probably means that I had something. Yeah, I can imagine. And how your kids been doing with it all? How school, homeschooling, and everything? Yeah, interesting. Um, they're doing, they're doing really well. There's been some tears, moments of really missing friends, and just feeling really that sense of isolation and, and kept feeling caged. I think, um, you know, they want to just escape from this space. Um, yeah, it makes you think about people in prison. <laughs> well, and how, is a bit nicer than a prison. I'm thinking more about persecuted, <laughs> persecuted believers, you know, locked down, not knowing when they're getting out. And you just, we, we're free, aren't we? But um, suddenly we, we're limited on what we can and can't do. That, that's definitely been a challenge. Yes, Although I have got to do one of my unfulfilled dreams, which is be a PE teacher. Oh, my days. I've okay. enjoyed that. Yeah. So, so how does that look like then? Is that like Mr. Calver, Mr. Calver? But there's a three o'clock every day because I'm obviously I'm doing loads with my work with the Evangelical Alliance. But three o'clock every day, spades down, PE hour. It's good. Okay. In your garden, <laughs> up and down. Boxing, boxing to football and everything in between. It's been fun. I think you and Joe Wicks are head to head. You should do a little afternoon kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, he's, he's another level, isn't he? What, isn't it incredible, though? How many people, like a Joe Wicks, or like a Carol Vorderman with maths, or like other people, yeah. stepping yeah. in the space. Yeah. And I actually think, as the church, if I was still at Youth for Christ, we would have done that for RE. Yeah. And I yeah. think there's some, they're, they're, I'm waiting for someone to. Yeah. And it, and it has been great, isn't it, to watch different people stepping up and things coming out. You know, yeah. some of the content that's out there is incredible. And, yeah. and, and, you know, how has it been for you guys? Because obviously you're talking about this home life and schooling, but also how do you lead in the uncertainty and how are you leading the Evangelical Alliance, leading the local church, and how is leadership? Because normally with leadership, you, you like to have sort of an idea what the future might hold, what the next week has, you know, some statistics, some you know, reference points, and then you make a decision. We've got no idea what the future holds. How have you managed to lead in the middle of that uncertainty? Yeah, yeah you go, go. Well, it's yeah. been really challenging to me because this is my first few months leading the Evangelical Alliance. When I took over leading Youth for Christ, which is the only other place I've led, um, we had global economic meltdown and our son had nine blood transfusions in the womb. And I remember at the time thinking, whatever I lead in the future will never be as hard <laughs> as this. Yeah. <laughs> and then now we find ourselves in this space, which is yeah. really challenging. But I think as the church, actually, I feel like I'm running a 174-year-old startup all of a sudden. Yeah. EA is much more agile. We've ripped up the 32-page strategic plan and replaced it with one sheet, which you may have seen yesterday. We put out on social media yesterday. EA is now just going to exist to to share the gospel, raise the voice of the church in the nation, and to serve our membership. Great. I think also we have to work out what, how do we hold ourselves? What's your posture? And it's three things I felt from the very start of this that are really important. Yeah. We've got to be praying. We've got to really be praying. I was delighted to be involved in calling a national day of prayer a few weeks ago. But we've really got to be praying for everyone caught up in this. Secondly, though, we've got to not panic. The church is called to be a non-anxious presence. You know, we stand on the rock of ages and whilst everything's changing, how do we not panic? And that extends to not panic buying and all of that, but it's, but it's actually in our demeanor, not panicking. And then thirdly, what's different when you have Jesus? So, so, so actually we're facing the crisis, but what's different? Yeah. It's interesting, this, particularly where we live, it's been thrown up in the air for a long time with Brexit before. No one mentions that word anymore, by the way. Very interesting. Yeah. But we've been living in a time for the last two or three years where the opportunity to show what's different when you have Jesus, it's incredible. Then the other thing as a leader it's done for me, it's made me pray for our national leaders. Because let's be honest, we think our jobs are hard. Imagine being Boris Johnson or Rishi Sunak or someone. And you know what? For all that they've had a bit of stick this week, those guys have done amazingly so far. 
Yeah, I, th I think it's very different, isn't it, um, in the local church scenario um, to the EA picture that, that Gav's in. I think I work with a really good team, and I think one of the things is that we've realised is the importance of relationship, that actually the things that are important for the local church and the things that aren't important, and you, you focus in, don't you, on the things actually, hopefully, that God is saying, and, and it seems to be, you know, we need to love people, we need to make sure we're connecting people and make sure that everyone is is looked out for that we know that everyone's being fed and taken care of but then beyond that that we're reaching out we're encouraging the church to reach out to their neighbor as well that they're not just we're not just going are you okay but is the wider street okay is um you know and it, it is everybody okay and, and also just really pressing in in prayer we started um a 24 7 prayer thing that we weren't doing before online and filling that lots of people praying um connecting zoom has become our new best friend yeah. uh, i think but when all is stripped away and all is stripped back um what becomes the most important thing and i think relationship with jesus and relationship with other people um are coming to the fore yeah yeah and i know you want to move on sim but but I am passionate about the church not missing this moment. Yeah. I was on a call with all kinds of senior clergy, let's say this week. And what they wanted to talk about was lack of offering and funerals. Yeah. And I'm like, that's important. That is important. It really is. But <laughs> the one option we don't have is to stay as we were. And you have a choice at the moment, especially if you're, if you're a church leader locally. Are you holding on to what you had or are you reimagining for what could yet be? And for me, this is the single greatest evangelistic moment Come of my on. life. Yeah. When there is an opportunity where the church is, is, is separated, is scattered, but has a chance to show what's different, to speak over fences, to love people, words, works and wonders. I mean, this is an amazing moment. And I will personally, I will be devastated if the church that returns at the end seeks to replicate the one before. Everything's thrown up in the air and it's a chance to reimagine. And I can't help but believe, Sim, that you locally must be doing some of this because you're innovative. You're a great church leader. But, but how are you feeling? Because because this is about us and the theme and stuff. But actually, as a church leader church in your leader. context, yeah, how, how much of a shaking is this for you and your folks? Absolutely. I mean, for me, I mean, I've been found it fascinating talking to church leaders, how people are typically divided in half. There's either, like you say, fear, fear about finances, fear about people leaving their faith people about leaving the church or there's people kind of reimagining the future kind of go what could it look like and as you can imagine I'm in that latter group and I'm excited I'm not excited by the circumstance we're facing mm -hmm. but I'm excited by in times of challenge and you look through history in times of challenge mm -hmm. the church has reinvented itself and found new yes. ones you know the mission won't change the way we do mission Come on. will change it must change it has to change and, and I, I mean, in, in the middle of that, I just saw a sign outside one of our local churches in the town here uh, that said, our building might be empty, but the church isn't here. It's been deployed. Come yeah, on, nice. I love it. I love that idea. It's been deployed. It's not here. And I guess for us coming into spring harvest and this theme unleashed, you know, talk about the dream behind unleashed and, and how, how unleashed is the church right now. <laughs> yeah I think um Gavin I obviously feel so passionate about the national church about about the church in all its fullness and you know I think to, to give people a little bit of a glimpse of what went on behind the scenes you know we gathered didn't we as a planning group as a team and we gathered together it was June it was June a long time back yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. 2018. 18. 18. 18 yeah. um, 2018. And we gathered and when we, we kind of ended up praying and repenting quite yeah. a lot, didn't we? Um, and just seeking the Lord and all going off, didn't we? And um, separately to listen in to what the Lord might be saying the theme would be for Spring Harvest 2020. And there was the real sense that, that the theme needed to, to be something that would encourage the church, that would um, help the church to look like the early church. And we wanted to kind of see the church unleashed to be like the early church. So I think together we all sensed that, didn't we? And we all felt, you know what, this is about Acts. This is about the early church. Why not look at Acts? Why not dig deep into what it looked like in those early days with the church and the power of the spirit coming and just getting hold of the believers and just releasing something incredible where thousands got saved. And now here we are in 2020 completely unleashed in a way we never imagined we would 
be. Yeah, I agree. I, I think there was also a sense that a lot of us have been around for quite a while, even though, you know, mm -hmm. some of us look still quite fresh faced. We've been around quite a while and we've been to lots of places and we've seen lots of things and we've done the kind of the circuit, if you like, and the treadmill of it's this time and it's this time and it's this and we all gather for this. And actually a dissatisfaction that in the end, the same God of the early church, the same God who has seen revivals in China, in Iran and all of that in recent years is the same God who's here with us here. And it's almost like a, a desire. And we are as included in this as anyone. This is not, of all the things we've ever written, this is not, we've got this sorted, no. you need to do. No. This is, we are all stuffed, back to basics, crack on. Yeah. But that same God lives here. And there's just a sense that perhaps we, we've lost touch with some of what it means to be church. And that's where a coronavirus does change everything. Because actually, if the church isn't the church now, what are we doing? If we're not feeding the hungry where no one else would, then what are we doing? But if we're not feeding the hungry and also offering the chance of, of the bread of life as well as the literal bread for dinner, then we've got a problem too. If we're, if we're only operating within our own strength and not the power of the Spirit, what have we done? And with something like Spring Harvest, which is, let's be honest, a 40-year-old institution or a dangerous movement for the moment, we felt challenged for a second. And it's one of those moments as well where, um, as the son of the, one of the co-founders, you feel, you feel freer to actually say, hang on, Spring Harvest was started to be more like the unleashed message than the temptation of the safety we can fall into today. Yeah. So I think for Spring Harvest too, this is a recognition of our roots and a returning to some of what we're about. Yeah. And arguably, you know, the whole theme of Unleashed is right back to our roots, you know, our real roots of the early church, you know, going back to the very beginning, you know, it, Someone once said that every business is now a startup. Every organization yeah. is now trying to rediscover itself. Well, the early church was that. I mean, it was like yeah. this, hold on, we've met this man, Jesus. He's changed our lives upside down. The old system doesn't work anymore. What does the new system look like? Mm. How do we do church? What is church? It's not the synagogue as it used to be. It's, it's not the, the rules and regulations and commandments, but now it's a new way of living. We don't know what it looks like. And, and I guess into some of that, you know, the book you guys pulled together, around the book of acts you know speaking to that because i think people want to as they come into the event this year going what are we going to discover how are we going to unleash the church using the book of acts how does that look for us today yeah i i think um you know the book well we're really excited about the book and um i think that the thing is that we want it to be like an equipping tool for the church um in these days to be able to go okay what did the early church do um, what did it look like for them and, and how did the gospel spread? And, and obviously the key there was that they were in prayer and they were waiting on God, which was our theme last year for Spring Harvest, wasn't it? So we, we've kind of been going pray, 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 which actually that is massive across the nation, not just through Spring Harvest, but pray, pray, wait, wait. And then, and then when the power of the spirit comes, like they see a mighty move out, a mighty scattering, you know, persecution scatters them. It isn't a virus that scatters them. It's persecution. Um, that scatters them but then they begin to spread the gospel um, in creative ways in powerful ways and then the wonders follow the word and the works and I think we actually what's crazy is we're scattered to our own homes but I don't know about you I feel incredible sense of togetherness with my brothers and sisters that I've never felt before and and there was this supernatural togetherness of the church um, and I think what we're, we're hopeful for is, is that there's this accompaniment of the wonders piece as well as our words that actually that we can call somebody and, and pray for them on the phone right now in the midst of this virus and we might see God heal them. You know, I heard a friend from Iran that happened in one of the, the uh, hospitals in Iran. They prayed for a guy with coronavirus in his hospital bed and he was healed in the hospital on the floor while he was on the phone to his friend who was praying. And, you know, I think we're, we're wanting to encourage the church to believe for more in this season as we're scattered, not to go, oh, this is what we're going to do and let's return to normal afterwards. But what is the new thing that God is doing and what is he birthing and what is he saying? Like as we're still, at, as we're quieter, what is he saying to each and every one of us? And how can we be unshackled, even though we're kind of shackled? How can we be unshackled to really spread his word? It's great. And Mark Twain said once that history repeats itself. It has to. No one listens. Mm -hmm. And I think as a church, it's really important that we remember our roots. 
So to some extent, the journey into acts has been like doing a church, who do you think you are? You know, that program from the BBC. <laughs> Go back, where have we come from? Where did we start? What did that look like? You know, so often in the UK as well, people will say to someone like me, because of my job, isn't it hard or aren't we starting to get persecuted? And actually, no, we're getting moderately marginalised. Let's get realistic about what persecution looks like. But we are increasingly living in, in things closer to the early church or even more like Babylon, if you want to get biblical examples. You know, the UK is a funny space. And I think we want to take people back to, this is actually, Christianity is quite simple. Maybe we've overcomplicated it. Let's get back to the simplicity. Let's live in that simplicity. And let's do all we can to make a difference in our day. What we love about the early church, unschooled, ordinary folk. Yeah. These aren't superstars. You know, we might have made them that because of the fact that the book's been read quite a lot of times, but these aren't superstars. I think the other thing that's really exciting about Unleashed for me, yes, Spring Harvest was the excuse for writing this, and it was written for that event. But this is a message to the church, and it's a prophetic call to the church. And it was always going to be. But what's happened now instead is everyone who was booked into Spring Harvest is invited to Spring Harvest home, but so is anyone else. And so all of a sudden, actually, the idea of even the material is now unleashed more because it's available more widely. And if anyone's watching this and you're not, you're not a Spring Harvester, whatever that is, yeah. then this book's as relevant to you as to anyone else. I feel it's a message to the UK church in this moment. Mm -hmm. Now, Spring Harvest is a great place for that to journey, but it goes beyond that. And it also is for all kinds of folks that maybe can't engage with Spring Harvest Home. This book will bless you, but it will challenge you. As Pete Gregg says on the front, this is dangerous stuff. It is dangerous, it is. but it's exciting. It's challenged us to the core. <laughs> yeah. And it is an exciting time because like you say, anyone can come along and participate. I mean, the church has never been so accessible in the sense, you know, I was able to go and visit a dozen churches last Sunday and just pop yes. in and see what everyone's up to. I mean, it's wonderful. Yeah. And we've had people who've <laughs> never been to church before who've come to our online services at Freedom Church here and just visited and felt able just to watch. One lady said she just cried her way through as she realised this is something she needed at a time like this. And she'd Amazing. never been to church before, but felt able to jump online and visit. Well, people can do it for Spring Harvest this year. They can just jump online if you've never been and thought, I can never, you know, I don't want to go to Butlins or I don't want to live in a chalet or whatever your excuse is, you know, it's the finances. All, that, all those excuses are now out the window. You're stuck at home. We're stuck at home. Um, you can jump in and you can listen to Spring Harvest Home for free uh, on our YouTube channel. It's, it's an exciting opportunity um, yeah. for all of us. And, and I, what, what bit, I guess, are you two looking forward to this opportunity of having these, I mean, so many, many people speaking online at the Spring Harvest Home event? Well, oh, I think um, I'm very excited. I really feel a challenge, actually, Sim, that we are accessible like that it isn't our normal spring harvest crowd that will just be tuning in as we've just said that there could well be lots of our friends who who know nothing of the bible who no, know nothing of jesus that actually what we're posting on that youtube channel is gonna speak to everyone um that is something that you know it's not a load of spiritual jargon but that actually it, it's the gospel in its simplicity um empowered by the spirit and actually that we are as we're re rolling it out, living out the Acts narrative online um, in 2020. So I think that's what I'm most hopeful for and looking, yeah. looking forward to. I'm excited about what a screen does for you. Mm. A screen gets you into people's houses you wouldn't be in otherwise. Um, Non-Christian friends of ours will watch a screen that would never go to church. I'm excited about the gospel impact and I'm excited mm -hmm. about the encouragement we can be. Also, if I'm completely selfish for a minute, Anne and I recorded 80 TV shows sat on a sofa together for TBN called Game Changers that were, that were slightly popular for a while, let's say. Came to a natural end. We're going to get to sit on a sofa next week Yay! and revisit Game Changers type style and for half an hour, chat about a Bible passage, go deeper with it, look at that, go further. I'm quite looking forward to doing that again as well. And I hope that quite a few of the folks perhaps that engage with Game Changers on TBN but again, wouldn't have come across Spring Harvest. It might be a nice crossover piece. So we're looking forward to that too. Gav, and thank you so much uh, for your time today. I appreciate it. there's loads more we could say. I mean, this it is an exciting opportunity like never before. And Spring Harvest, along with all our various local churches, we're grabbing hold of the opportunity. Oh, and the yeah. prayer is that this wouldn't just be a presentation, but it'd be an impartation of the Holy yes. Spirit at work amongst come on. us. It wouldn't just be a start and end of an event at the beginning of a catalyst for something more. Our prayer is the church is unleashed. 
See the Come on, yeah. Uh, right. look forward and, to and can I just there. ask him? So Sorry? Can I just ask before we go? Yeah. If anyone is in doubt of whether they will, uh, where they can get the book, it's available at all Christian retailers. You can get it from Essential Christian. Or if you buy your books from somewhere else, buy it from wherever you buy it from. And it will bless you and help you. Just to encourage you to. I get no royalty from the book. It all goes to the Evangelical Alliance and the mission work. So this is not a money-making exercise. It's a ministry thing. And whilst you're there, get in your copy of Unleashed. Have a little search for Simply Church by Sim Dendy. Yes. It's a wonderful <laughs> yes, sister Sim. product. If you're going to get one, get both. Oh, Enjoy, be blessed, and let's crack on together in making Jesus known. You, <laughs> you are very kind, Mr. and Mrs. Calver. Thank you so much, Gavin Ann. We look forward to seeing you at the Spring Harvest Home event. Come and join us. It'll be a great time. Thank you.